Okay, moving on. What are the main differences between the spooky Phanatron plasma tube and the spooky straight plasma tube? Well, this is our straight plasma tube, and well, one difference is it's straight. Um, and this is our Phanatron here. Our straight tube was the first tube which we designed. Um, it's, it's protected by a polycarbonate tubing. We wanted to keep the tube safe for handling. With all our equipment, we focus on safety. And so we didn't want to have a weak glass tube directly exposed. And so this is why we enclosed it in the polycarbonate. Now, the Phanatron tube was a tube that was quite a long time in development. It was a long time because we had to source some things which weren't so you can't just buy from a hardware store. The glass, for example, is borosilicate, which is also known as Pyrex or like a cooking glass. It's the glass that you can throw into an oven for your baking and it doesn't crack. It doesn't crack because it's tough stuff. And it's very hard to work with and people don't like working with it. So to get a glass blower that was, um, had the equipment and the expertise to make these tubes you know, it took a long time for us to find someone to, that could do this. And of course, they had to buy the equipment that could work the glass. But we found a nice person, and we've, we've, um, he's part of the Spooky Group now, and he makes these for us. The glass is nice and thick and strong, and so they're safe. Okay, the Phanatron tube signal, it is more focused. The more energy is directed in one direction. Um, the gas is different between the two tubes. Uh, as I mentioned before, the straight plasma tube uses predominantly argon, whilst the phanatron tube uses pure helium. This was the gas which was favoured by Royal Rife. He got the best results using this gas, and so he decided we'd follow in, this, in his footsteps. Now there's one other thing I'd like to mention at this stage. Um, many people throw a tiny amount of mercury into their tubes. The effect of this is twofold, and both are positives for sales. The first is it makes the tube glow extremely brightly. It makes it look very, very powerful. The other advantage of mercury is that it makes the tube easy to light. And so if their machine um, has difficulty lighting the tube by their design, they add an ever so small amount of mercury to the tube, the mercury vaporizes inside the partial vacuum of the tube and allows the gas to ionize very easily. Now, if the, if the tube ever breaks, you've got mercury in the environment. But what many people also believe is that the mercury changes the characteristics of the tube. There's some things that people don't understand, including the, people, including the scientists. They don't really know why plasma, which is fully enclosed inside a glass vessel, is able to heal um, so well, whereas an open wire antennae doesn't, or it doesn't seem to have such a profound uh, biological effect. And so, yes, we use plasma, and we don't play around with mercury. Um, if you know, Mercury was certainly around and in use whilst Royal Rife was um, making his machines, he chose not to use mercury, he had his good reasons, and we're going to follow him. Now the Phanatron tube has two holders, they're the two black things either side, and they make the tube um, easy to handle. If you place the tube onto a flat surface, it won't roll because it has flat edges. It also keeps the tube from touching the desk. If you place the tube on a desk, it holds it, it keeps it about four or five millimeters up from the surface. The Phanaton tube electrodes, uh, it's got one electrode actually that's angled and one that's straight. The angled electrode deflects the plasma and it projects it outward so it becomes more like a broadcaster in one area rather than a, uh, a broad broadcaster in all areas such as the straight tube. Um, the Phanaton tube, um, it, I do like it. It seem the results that we get seem to be better than the straight tube. I think it's because more of the energy is focused, and possibly because of the gas that's used. We've tried helium in the straight gas, 
Helium is a very hard gas to work with. It's got very small molecules, and so it's easy for the helium to even pass through glass. The borosilicate glass is very thick, and it can't pass through that. But the straight tube uses neon glass, and that doesn't seem to hold on to the uh, helium molecule so well. But also it's much, much harder to ionize, to make it light up. Uh, it is possible, but it just wasn't really a happening thing for us. And so the phalantron certainly seems to be quite a superior tube. Okay, I've already covered the frequency range and the borosilicate glass, so we'll move on.